Mexico's and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Welcome to Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you joined us today right here on your TBN, the number one Christian network in the world. We have an incredible program prepared for you. And before I tell you about it, I just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, Miss Jan Crouch. I love them. I appreciate all that they have done and are continuing to do to build and advance the body of Christ, the kingdom of God globally. And as always, I encourage our precious partners, our faithful viewers, pray for Matt and Lori, pray for Miss Jan. Believe me, they feel the strength, they feel the encouragement that comes for your prayers. We're a family, we're a body of believers, and together we're going to continue through the ministry of TBN to reach the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Now our special guest today is a very well accomplished man of God. He's an anointed man of God. He's the president of Life Christian University. And wait until you hear the things that God's placed on his heart to share with you today. He's also going to be telling us some exciting things that are happening there at the university. So excited to have Dr. Dr. Douglas Wingate here. God is going to use him to speak to you and to bless you in an incredible way. But right now, let's just prepare our hearts. Let's prepare the atmosphere for what God wants to say and do as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this divine appointment. It is no accident, it's no coincidence that we are here gathered together at this moment, this place, this time. So God, you have your way today. Encourage us, lift us up, Say the things that only you can say and do the things that only you can do. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Can we lift up our hearts, lift up our hands, and let's worship the Lord in song. Would you agree today that we serve a great God? I love this song. It goes like this. Great are your ways, great are your works, great are you, Lord, in all the earth. Yeah. Great is your power, great is your strength, great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. We say, great are your words, great are you, Lord, yeah. Great is your power, great is your strength, Lord. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. In your greatness, in your famous name is exalted. And we sing glory, glory, hallelujah, glory to the God of Israel. And hallelujah, and all the earth will see that you're a great God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Lord. Let's sing that verse one more time. Great are Strength, Lord. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Cause your greatness and your famous name is exalted. In all the earth we sing glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory to the God of Israel. And hallelujah. And all Great God, glory, glory, hallelujah. 
No matter what you're facing, feeling, going through in your life, God is worthy of your praise. He's worthy of the honor and the glory. Look, I'm so excited that you're here with us today. I really believe you're going to be inspired. You're going to be blessed over the next few moments. Always having an opportunity here at TBN to interview someone who's powerful, someone who's interesting, and our guest definitely fits that description today. I'm so excited to have him here, Dr. Douglas Wingate. God bless you, sir. Thank you. So honored to meet you. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Heard some wonderful things about you from Miss Jan and the TBN family, and of course, you are the president as well as the founder, if I'm correct, yes. of Life Christian University. So, mm -hmm. could you talk to us a little bit? I know many of our viewers are familiar with. With the university, but talk to us a little bit about how you got started and okay. some of the great alumni that have been through the doors. Well, praise God. Yes, uh, we started 21 years ago. We're just now finishing our 21st year. Congratulations. Thank you. I had been in ministry higher education for several years leading to the time we established the university. And we did so with the idea of taking a ministry education program and planting it in churches mm -hmm. so that people could get their ministry education locally okay. where they wouldn't have to leave their church and serving where they're serving and they can continue their ministry education. So we've established, actually we've established 270 extension campuses. Wow. In, uh, these 20, huh. 21 years. Wow. We have operated, of course there's some attrition, so we have operated with, right now we have 135 campuses. That's amazing. And that's in 39 states in the U.S. and 17 <laughs> foreign countries. Wow. And uh, God, who is the great promoter of all things, if you want to <laughs> give him all the glory and yeah. all the praise, he will do the promoting. And yet we still feel like we're just scratching the surface and, and just getting started. So we don't, wanna, come. <laughs> you know, we don't want to be the best kept secret uh, you know, in Florida or anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's been a very exciting thing. The Lord has uh, again done the promotion. We've got campuses in Moscow, Russia, all the wow. way through uh, wow. Dubai. Uh, the United Arab Emirates, a fully Arab Muslim country, and we got a great work going there. That's a man, that's Training, a miracle. Training, uh, it is a total miracle. So it's an indication of where we're at. Mm -hmm. When you see the opposition of the devil against the body of Christ <laughs> and against the church in the world, mm -hmm. and yet what God is doing to push forward a great revival and a great awakening, and it's global. Yeah. It truly is global. It is global, and I travel, as many people know, all over the world, and the move of God that is happening globally. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. And you know, I want you to speak to something that uh, it was a mentality that a lot of people had in my generation. And that is the anointing is enough. If I want to be in ministry, the anointing is enough. And, and of course it is. When God's called you, you're called and he's going to bless you. But the education is so important because not only does it give you credibility with the body, but with the world, the secular world. Mm -hmm. and, and being in education, Talk to us a little bit about your perspective on the importance of having that as a part of your resume. Well, absolutely. The first thing, of course, is what you gain yourself personally in the, in the uh, deeper understanding of the Word of God, the mm -hmm. transformation that we go through. 
Uh, I believe that God has the anointing for us, but he can't anoint ignorance. He's got to anoint <laughs> knowledge and I like understanding. That. I like that. And so we have to have some substance. We have to have a full cup to be able to pour out of. Mm -hmm. And we have found, though, in the process of time that many people have had major doors open for them in ministry through the upper level degrees, a doctorate degree. There's many places in the world you can't get in as a missionary right. unless you unless. have a doctorate degree. And they've seen the doors open in many places, and they said it's been a major benefit for them to have achieved mm. that through the university. Uh, and, and you're going to be a lifetime student of the Word anyway. Right. You might as well let some of it be directed, earn some degrees for it, mm -hmm. get recognized for the education you have. And, of course, if it opens the doors for those that are going into foreign countries especially, Praise God, how thing. God uses it. And I love what you said, God doesn't anoint ignorance. <laughs> and, and I know even when I feel the Lord dealing with me on a particular subject, forgiveness, we're going to talk about forgiveness in our church, because of my knowledge of the scripture, I can put a message together without ever cracking open a Bible, but just write the scriptures out. There's something for God to move on. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said about the definitions of words, right? You know, understanding the Greek, the Hebrew, understanding the context of scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, something that you guys, uh, I'm sure, emphasize greatly through your curriculum. We really do. There's been a lot of excellent scholars and new ones all the time. I happen to bring a the Mirror Bible, Francois Dutrois, a yeah. South African gentleman who's yeah. currently translating, and it's he, he, he calls it a, uh, uh, not an exact translation, but he does his, his exegetical, that line upon line, precept mm -hmm. upon precept, Greek word studies mm -hmm. in this and, and shows you why he's wording it the way it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it brings out the light of the gospel to us in a way, like you say, forgiveness. If you don't understand, you have to walk in the love of God because he mm -hmm. has deposited his presence. I mean, we are... Uh, carriers of God mm -hmm. and carriers of the Lord Jesus Christ every day. If we don't let that love of God shine out, mm -hmm. we don't really carry the anointing to impact other people's lives. And if we walk in unforgiveness, we shut that down. Absolutely. There's all those different keys. I like what Rodney Howard Brown says, Lord, show me the keys. Mm -hmm. I'll make copies and pass them out. Right. You know? <laughs> I love that. And that's what we're all doing. We're, we're learning the keys of how to walk the Christ life walk mm -hmm. to be able to be fruitful in what God's called us to do and the only way to do that is to do it the Lord's way mm -hmm. with the grace of God, the faith of God, and, of course, that love that just breaks through. It's the love of God that draws a person under repentance. I say no matter what we're training people to do, whether they're apostles or mm -hmm. prophets or evangelists or pastors or teachers, the bottom line is still souls. souls. It's all about populating heaven. Yeah. And that's what really drives the Lord. He so loves humankind and getting that message and, uh, to the understanding of the church mm -hmm. that he wants to dwell in them and use them and cause them to be fruitful and also popular. That, that's them. so powerful. And that's one of the things that I really commend you and the university on because it, it's one thing to have an emphasis on theology, doctrine, your Greek, your Hebrew, but to have the central focus of all of that knowledge, to be empowering people, to win the loss. May the church never forget the Great Commission is Absolutely. our commission. That's right. And you're seeing some incredible, uh, Jesus said you're going to know them by their fruits. And, and mm -hmm. when you see some of the children of the university, the people who have come through and the ministries that they now have, some real, what I like to call movers and shakers in the body of Christ mm -hmm. that are soul winning. Talk to us about some of the ministries that have been formed through the university. Well, one, we've got an incredible operation. My wife and I were just at our 10th anniversary graduation in India. We have 25 campuses in, across central You're India. Kidding. That's kidding. That's amazing. And uh, we are working with Dr. John Joseph there who mm -hmm. took over his father's ministry. And he, his father was an apostle who had planted churches for 50 years and had about 55 churches. John now has nearly 100 churches. Wow. The 25 wow. campuses of the university, 10 children's homes, just doing an incredible job. And God has so raised them up with the knowledge and the understanding from training the other ministers and, and creating the kind of leadership that he does, mm -hmm. that God's opened the door. He's doing the big open air crusades of 100,000 people wow. and, they're, wow. and they're doing the work of the ministry that we can't really do. I can't go and do all those things, but when we tr empower mm -hmm. the ministers who are already there with knowledge and understanding of the word, they do those things. Yeah. And so it's not like asking people to give to our children's home that we sponsor or give to mm -hmm. this out evangelistic outreach. No, our graduates are doing that. So if we get our partners 
to help us train more and more graduates, then praise God, they'll do that work of the ministry. And that's the principle of multiplication Absolutely. and discipleship. You know, you, you, you birth one child and that child births a thousand souls. That's to your account. That's to what you guys are doing. And talk to us about some of the alumni because I, I looked at a magazine a few minutes ago of some of the well-known ministers that have... Big name ministers. Well, what we've done in their cases, so they haven't attended Life Christian University, mm -hmm. but we've, we were able to recognize all of their scholarly work or their sure. published materials, whether it's print materials or things that they put out in, in teaching CDs mm -hmm. and everything. And uh, so Dr. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Love Joyce that. Meyer, Benny yeah. Hinn, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and the Lord's just given us grace and favor to be able to you know, come alongside. We use their books in the university. We use That's theirs amazing. as textbooks. And so to us, it's an honor to be able to recognize their academic work and the things that they've done for the kingdom of God. And uh, those, so those, the degrees they have are earned degrees. Mm -hmm. So we oh, stack yeah. everything up, you know, from all of their teaching, their former education, everything else, all the way through their doctorate degrees and, uh, and issue those. Now there are a number of them that have, haven't published as much and whatever, so they have some honorary degrees. Mm -hmm. We know they have the equivalent ministry education. Right. But uh, you can go on our website, that's uh, lcus.edu, and take a look at all of those uh, distinguished degree holders that we have. Uh, that we're so proud to be able to be associated with and to labor in the harvest with them. That's an amazing resume for you guys, and it's an incredible recognition, as you said. You know, I know Pastor Benny well, and uh, I don't know if anybody that knows the word quite as well. I mean, he's a very, very, and then, of course, Joyce Meyer is one of the most brilliant speakers as well as authors, hasn't written a bad book. Over 100 <laughs> books that she's written, they're just phenomenal. And so it's, it's a great, and I commend you for honoring them and giving them that honor. Now, you've written a book, mm -hmm. and I want you to talk to us just a little bit about some of the revelations, some of the content that's in that book. Well, it's what I consider fundamental that I realize for a lot of people, it's probably off the charts as far as, <laughs> uh, you know, elevating people's faith. Okay. And so I'm actually working on three series. This is the textbook for our course on principles of faith, and it's called uh, Divine Faith and Miracles. Okay. And it's based on the idea that, you know, we can have ever-increasing faith. As born-again believers, we don't have just faith for salvation. Right. All faith comes the same way, believing in your heart, confessing with your mouth. Mm -hmm. And when you meditate on God's covenant promises and speak those things to yourself and the faith comes alive, then you can pray the prayer of faith and then you stand your ground and you'll eventually get that miracle. I love we that. all need miracles. Mm -hmm. the, when we found out we, we don't just have to wait for the great healing evangelist to come to town right. or the pastor to be flowing in the spirit a certain way a certain day, <laughs> you know, it's that we can use our faith and exercise it. And when we get the supernatural and for, answer from the Lord. It's a miracle just as surely as if we were to see one, receive one of those instantaneous ones. And, and I was talking to one of our guests earlier today uh, about how we limit God. He can only heal us through the evangelist or through the pastors, you said, when every six months when that thing hits him, you know. <laughs> but, but God is so beyond that. He can heal in your sleep. He can heal in your car, any, any which way he chooses to. But I want to kind of press in on this because this, this is something that I've noticed pastoring that's a major issue for a lot of people. Uh, so many people have the faith to receive salvation. Mm -hmm. And you think about how amazing this is. You come out of your seat, perhaps come down to an altar, you confess, you repent, and you go home and I'm born again, I'm going to heaven. You've never received a document in the mail. You've never <laughs> received a badge saying you're on your way to heaven. It's by faith that people receive this incredible miracle. But yet so many believers struggle to cross that bridge and say, the same way I believe for my salvation is the way I believe for my healing. Mm -hmm. Can you shed some light on that? How, how can we cross that barrier? How can we settle that in our heart once and for all? So the viewers that are watching today can get to that place where they have the same faith for healing miracles as they do their salvation. Well, they're all based on covenant promises of God. Okay. And we don't want to try to believe for anything that He promised in the Word. But I'll tell you what, if we'll just try to focus on the covenant promises that are in the Word, we will be so busy believing God the rest <laughs> of our lives because you, you, it's true. The, the salvation that Jesus provided for us was so complete and so perfect. And I, what I really see, and I like to inspire this in people, is that you have a calling of God on your life. Yeah. And everything, yeah. even the healing of your body, the provision, the prosperity, all I of those things are tools. Mm -hmm. They are tools for you to get that assignment done. Mm. So it's incumbent upon us to pursue all of the tools necessary 
to accomplish the job that God has set before us to do. So we need to be filled with the Spirit by faith. We need to be healed by faith, prospered by faith. All of those things, again, uh, we need that peace in our home so that we've, we've got that full cup to be able to minister out of. And then every single day, God can open up a door, an opportunity. It might be in the grocery store line. It might be walking the aisles. of the grocery store. You don't know. And you've got to be in prayer so much that you hear the voice of the Lord and He can prompt you. And, and then you know that any moment can be the day of somebody stepping from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom, kingdom of, of the Son of His love. I love that. And I, I think you, you really hit something that to me is very important. And that is our miracle is not just for ourselves. It is a part of our equipment and packaging to do what God called us to do. And I've often preached that story, the, the transition between Mark 4 and Mark 5. Jesus is on a boat and everybody knows the boat began to sink. He had to speak peace to the storm. But what people fail to realize is chapter 5. There was a man who was possessed by 5,000 devils. Mm -hmm. And he was waiting on Jesus to get to the other side to bring deliverance. And had that boat sunk that Jesus was on, not only would God have failed his son, but he would have failed to bring deliverance to Legion. There was a divine appointment. And I think if the body of Christ can kind of shift our perspective and realize that this healing, this miracle isn't just for me, but it's to be a part of my equipment to do what God's called me to do. Absolutely. Well, Legion, of course, was in that area of Decapolis, 10 cities, mm -hmm. and he wanted to follow Jesus and the disciples right away. And Jesus says, no, go back and tell, tell. the story. Yeah. And yeah. as far as we know, that, that whole area got evangelized through the one who'd gotten delivered. So everything is a multiplication, as you say. It is. And understanding that uh, we, God has brought us into this life that's going to be uh, empowered by His Spirit. We're going to see miracles our whole lives. We're going to realize that uh, he gets all the glory, all the praise, all the thanksgiving for everything that happens through us. But when we get to heaven one day, mm -hmm. He's going to reward us as though we had done it. Where is the downside in serving a God like that? It's so powerful. <laughs> so not only do we get the fruit, the direct things that we've done, but if we empower, if we help, even if we sponsor someone in education, uh, where, wherever they go, whoever they win to the Lord, that's fruit in our account. Absolutely. That's an amazing principle. And I really believe that, you know, I, I see our rewards in heaven not based on some sort of like a, a merit system, even like the old covenant right. law of, of Moses, you know, where it's all works and you earn certain things. It's more of the Lord saying, I, be faithful over the things here on this earth. Mm. And then later on he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your Lord. But he's going to say, you've been faithful over a few small things. I'm going to make you ruler over much. We are involved in eternity already. Every and day. our eternal so position good. of being, being able to be fruitful there, whatever his assignment's going to be. I don't believe we're going to be floating around on clouds playing harps. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't agree want with you to on do that. that. <laughs> I mean, I, I take a, a million years at the feet of Jesus just worshiping him. Sure. But after that, what are we going to be doing? Mm -hmm. And there's going to be something that he's given us as a responsible, responsibility for eternity. I don't want to miss out on that. And, and you're so right. And it's sad to say this, but so few Christians are eternally minded. Right. They're, they're so consumed with the today, not realizing, and I love how you put that, that our faithfulness of today will determine what God entrusts us with in eternity. Mm -hmm. And I, I absolutely love your heart. I love your spirit. I, I'm excited over the fact that there is a spirit-filled, spirit-led university that's imparting not only knowledge, but the anointing into people. And I want to encourage everyone that's watching to get some more information. The website is there on the screen. If you or someone in your family is looking to better themselves and advance themselves in education, I really believe this is one of the finest and best places that you can do it. Now, doctor, before we go off the air today, you've been talking about miracles. You've been talking about God doing the things that only he can do. I'd love you just to take about 30 to 60 seconds to look into that camera and just pray for miracles and pray for people's faith to be strengthened that they could receive what they're believing God for. Amen, praise God. I'd like to tell you, first of all, God is not trying to disqualify you. He wants you to know you are already qualified. Uh. Jesus paid the price for your redemption, and you are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is nothing between you and the Father to receive the miracle that you need. So I'm going to pray and release my faith with you in right Jesus now name. for God to flow into your life and to equip you, that your healed body is a tool 
for the purpose that God has placed you on this earth. So Father, every single viewer that's out there today, Jesus. I pray for them. Touch Father, them. I ask that by your stripes, the Lord's stripes of the Lord Jesus that paid the price for their healing, that you would move in the realm of the Spirit on their behalf right now and produce a healing, affect a healing and a cure in their bodies so that they're able to take the wealth and the health and everything that you Jesus. bless them with, Father, as tools to be able to go forth and do exploits in your name, to be useful in their sphere of influence in shining the light of the gospel into other people's lives. We thank you for it, Lord. We receive our healing. We receive the blessing of heaven so that we can be faithful to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. You know, I feel the anointing right now. I feel the presence of the Lord and thank you for praying and being obedient. And I just want to say this as, as we have our, our final moments here. The same faith that it was and that it re required to receive our salvation, that's the same faith to receive a miracle. And I've watched people over the years, I've, I've evangelized and pastored, and you have people at the altar that just, they're wailing, you know, they're crying, and they have this, and there's other people who just come and have a small sense of peace. It's mm -hmm. not based on our feelings. Is no, it? not whatsoever. It's just based on the work of the cross, yes. the work of Jesus Christ. So for those of you that are watching today, some of you, as, as Dr. Wingate was praying, you felt that chill bump go up your spine. Some of you felt heat. You felt some kind of sensation, some kind of feeling. And some of you might have just said, well, I hope I receive. Look, it's not based on your feeling. The same faith that you said, God, I take my salvation and I receive it, is the same faith you need to rise up in right now in that living room, that bedroom, that hotel room, perhaps a hospital room, a prison cell. The same faith that it required for you to say, Jesus, I accept your salvation, is the same faith you need to stand up in right now and say, Jesus, I receive my healing. There is an anointing for healing. Your miracle is being released right now. And in faith, you rise up. Claim it. Grab it. God has it for you. Dr. Wingate, it has been an honor, sir. Thank it has you. been a blessing. And we'll continue to pray for the great work that you're doing. TBN family, make sure you pray. We need education like this. We need spirit-led, spirit-filled universities imparting knowledge and the anointing into the next generation. So continue to pray for him. And know here at TBN that we're continuing to pray for you. We love each and every one of you, our precious partners, our faithful viewers. We could not do what we do here at TBN without you. So come on, together, let's continue to take the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to the four corners of the earth. And until we get to meet again, why don't you remember, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God bless you. And until next time, bye-bye. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.